Hey crafters, it's Julie Creek from Creek Bank Creations. Excited to be with you today and ready to share with you a brand new product called the Triangle Gatefold Card Die. So this is a base card die. You can decorate it the way you want to. It comes with um, five different die pieces and you can make a belly band to go on it. And then you have a gatefold card that opens up. So this actually fits in an A2 envelope. So it ships for first class postage. I specifically designed this card for um, getting ready for Christmas. I'm excited to come and share it with you today. I'm gonna to take a little break here in the video and share with you some pictures of different ways I've made the card. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to make the card yourself. Thanks for joining me. So I hope you enjoyed all those creative ideas and different ways to use the triangle gatefold card base. This is um, a really versatile die and easy to use. What's really interesting, I think, is the way that you can make that uh, fun calendar card. And that one um, is just scored in the middle of the base of the die. Very interesting. And um, that design was made by Diane Wilcox from upstate New York. So the triangle gatefold card base, let's look at it. This is what the package looks like. And when you open it up, what you're going to find are five different dies. This is your die base. And then you have two stitched triangles that are used to accent the base. And you have the two hexagons that are made to stack inside of each other. What's interesting about the hexagon is you can have fun with how you decide to use it on the card. I like to attach it to a belly band, which is what we've done here. Nice little belly band. Diane, in this case, used the little Velcro dot to attach, so that's another way to do it. This one, um, I made the clear belly band, and do you see how I have the small hex on the front, and then we have the large hex on the inside. So you can mess around with how you use the shapes and how you stack the shapes to, um, get a, to create a different look out of it. I think it's really fun to decorate the inside and then um, stamp your sentiment on that. So you can mess around with how you use that hex shape. We also have a die that works really well with this die called the card stand die. And the card stand die, um, you die cut that, and then you have a nice stand for the card. So you can um, die cut this half sheet of paper, put it in an envelope, and ship that to your friend or whoever you're sending it to, and then they have a nice way to um, hold the card up on the table. And you can actually die cut that in a matching color. So um, let's talk about how to put this together. You're gonna take your um, paper and cut the base die first. And when you die cut this, it's going to cut and score for you. It is almost an exact fit on the standard, um, the standard cutting plate for Sizzix. So you have to kind of watch the little points and make sure you get those done. Easiest to cut it on the extended cutting platform, but you can make it work on the standard if you have that. Now for the inside, I've already cut the um, inside on white cardstock and I've used our rectangle stitch die. I like to cut this a little bit smaller and then I've already stamped our Merry Christmas sentiment on there. So we have our basic card already going. Now, for our card today, I love the buffalo plaid that's so popular, and I actually designed a buffalo plaid stencil specifically so that we could end up using them on our Christmas cards this year. So I have die cut two of the smaller stitched shapes and we are going to add those to the front of our card, but we're going to do some stencil work. So I'm going to take my quarter inch super tacky tape 
and I'm going to lay that down on the deck and I'm gonna show you how I set up to do stencil work. I know that uh, not everyone does it this way, but this is the way I like to do it because I do not like my projects wiggling around. So I'm gonna take my two shapes, I'm gonna line them up with the grid system using our grid pad and I'm gonna push them down into the tape and then I'm going to put the buffalo plaid stencil on top. When I put that on top, I'm going to use the grid and use the grid to line up the stencil so I know the stencil is straight. And if I know my shape is straight and that my stencil is straight, I have a nice pattern straight. Now we're gonna use the J brush. This is the brush that I invented, didn't invent, but I designed for stencil brush and I designed this extra wide so it's easy to hold in your hand. You can slide that band up and down. And so if we pull it up, we'll have a really tight feel with it and get detail. If we pull it back, we'll have a looser feel. And for this, we can use it loose. We're gonna start off on the grid and we're gonna do little circles and we're gonna build up color. So we're just gonna pick up and build up. You can start with a light application and then build it up into a darker application. And I, I really like to do the small circles all over. Some people like to swipe, and if you like to swipe, you can do that. Either way works. We're just going to go around and around. Now our brush is made with a natural bristle. This is not a makeup brush. It's specifically designed for ink and paint and media. So you can use this on different media systems. Today we're using it with dye-based ink. So any of the dye-based inks will work with the brush. We're gonna pull up the head, put the lid on, and put the brush away. So now we're ready to take off our stencil. We have that beautiful pattern in the background. We're going to wipe off our stencil with our Wonder Wipe. And this is a little soft chamois stencil that we've uh, brought out that is great for cleaning your stamps and stencils. It doesn't leave any residue. So you can literally wipe that off and have a clean stencil. Don't have to worry about it leaving a fibrous residue in your stamp or stencil. And the great part about this is when this dries, it is not a little hard thing. It still remains soft. Now, when we put that down, we used our tape. So I'm going to take undo and I'm gonna put my undo where that tape is. And that's going to allow me to pull off my triangles without tearing them up. And you can see that's not moving the ink. It's just gonna release for me. So undo suspends adhesion. As long as that's wet, I can remove the tape and stuff that I need. And then I don't have to worry about it tearing up my background. So I've got my two triangles done and I'm ready to add them to my card. So I'm gonna turn these over. When I adhered these, I like to use the liquid glue from Art Institute. And we do carry the liquid glue Art Institute with the steel nozzle. So the nozzle does not come with the bottle. You buy it separately. And um, it comes with a little head pin, just a straight pin and really easy to lose that pin so that is why we offer the bottle bobble and you can buy those they're on our website that gives you the ability to put that in and you don't lose your pin that goes in your bobble so let's put our two triangles on our card now when i put the triangles on this card i do like to use the liquid glue because it gets the um adhesive all the way into the points of the triangle so that when we go to put that belly band over our card, it doesn't um, catch on the points of the triangles. So just love the Buffalo plaid, do a lot with it for Christmas. You make really cool um, Halloween cards with it too. Stick that down. And there we have our front, very simple. Okay, now let's get our belly band going. We're gonna take our red cardstock and we're gonna cut a piece of uh, red cardstock one inch by 10 inches and then we're gonna score. So I'm going to put this up on the top of my scoreboard and I am going to score at two and a quarter and then we're gonna move over an eighth of an inch and score at two and three eighths. And then we're gonna score at six and a half 
move over one eighth of an inch and score at six and five eighths. That gives us our belly band. So we're gonna take our belly band and prepare it to wrap around the card. Add a little piece of tape right there so we can secure that around our card. that and we'll take our tape off actually I think if I turn it the other way yeah I'm gonna just turn it the other way so I have that tape on the other side so you want to make the belly band so that it's tight enough to hold but loose enough that you can slide it on and off and that really gives it a really good look so we're gonna add our um, hex shapes right to the front of that. So we're gonna take our hex, and I've already cut this in green, add that right to the front. <clears throat> I already got my tape peeled on there. We're just gonna stick it on. And then we're gonna add our other piece, our triangle, or I'm sorry, our hex to the front. <clears throat> now, we can add our accent to the front and we have these lovely pine branch dies that are really super detailed. They look great on here. And we are going to, I like to um, adhere these with the Art Institute liquid because I just like to secure them in the middle and I like the way they're loose and hang off the edge. So we're just going to add a little bit of glue right in there and just kind of leave those loose. That is the Pine Branch die, and that's new for Christmas 2020. Now we have our pine cone. This is a two-piece die set. So you're gonna have the base, and then you're gonna have this detailed piece. I like to cut the base on some craft, and then this is a darker brown, and I have applied my super tacky tape to the back. We're gonna peel that off. And what we want to do is layer that right on the base. So we're going to add a little undo. Undo is going to suspend adhesion and give me time to line that up perfectly exactly where I want it. And that's going to dry in about 30 seconds. And when it does, I'm going to have permanent adhesion. Just going to add a little liquid to the back. Stick that on my card. This is just a really pretty card. Now we wanna add a little finishing touch to this card and that is some red self-adhesive pearls. And um, when we came out with these last year, I specifically asked the manufacturer to give us a really small pearl that would be easy to ship. And these are made so that they are not connected in a line. So they are literally made so that you can take them off one or two at a time place them where you want them on your card and have um, placement without having to deal with a whole entire string of adhesive. I like to group these in groups of three for that berry look. So that is how you use the triangle gatefold card. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? It makes a nice presentation, a beautiful card. And I do, before we go, I wanna show you one other thing. The, um, one of the fun things about this die is the many ways you can use it. And I wanna share with you the um, scrapbook page and how you can use this on your scrapbook page. You can use the hex shapes and there's the triangles on a scrapbook page. Down here at the bottom, I took the large hex and used our line stencil and um, made a journaling block out of the large hex. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell this from this um, vantage point, but really cool that you can also use the whole thing on a scrapbook page. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed a little tutorial about the triangle gatefold card. You can find tons of creative ideas with the triangle gatefold card on